Oh boy. Here we go. Back to the future. Well, I guess welcome you all to the first episode of uh, Beat This Game today. Um, today we're going to be doing Back to the Future on the NES. Now, I would have recorded this commentary while playing the game, but uh, be honest with you, I'm really not that good at um, playing and uh, talking at the same time. Uh, I like to focus completely on the game, so had I done an audio track live while I was playing this game, I either would have sucked it up actually playing, or I would have said nothing. So, we're going to be doing the audio track after. Which is kind of good, because then I can actually talk about stuff without worrying about messing it up. Now, for all any of you who have not played this game, this is a uh, pretty simple, um, kind of like Paperboy and some other games like that. You just go straight ahead, make sure nothing hits you and kills you, and you have a time limit uh, down there on the right corner, and then you also have a, um, a photograph in the middle that you have to get the clock so that it doesn't fade away, similar, I guess, to the, uh, the movie, but that's kind of a stretch. And you have, as you're going through these stages, you have various um, uh, items you can get. One being the, uh, I guess it's a bowling ball, or I don't know what the hell it is. And you can see me shooting it already. And then uh, two, you can get the skateboard. And then you can kill your enemies. And really, the bottom line for this game is you have to. It is absolutely imperative that you get these weapons. Um, not just for the point of beating this game faster, but... This game gets really insane with the um, with the enemies later on in the game, and if you trust me, if you don't have one of those two and you're cons dying all the time, there's n there's no way you're gonna beat it. You could probably get through the first stage uh, well enough with maybe not having them, but uh, the other stages, no way. So the game pretty much consists of four, I think, four different levels. You've got the uh, cafe, you've got the school. You've got the uh, Enchanted Under the Sea dance, and then the final level, which is uh, you driving the car, trying to get up to 88 miles an hour so you can go back to the future. Um, as far as this run goes, this was this was actually a pretty good run for me. Uh, but I'm going to be real honest with you. Uh, I probably played this game for about four hours before I actually got a good, um, a good complete take from beginning to end. And this is actually the last take, and I guess I could have... I probably could have done a little bit better than this, but um, you know what? I tell you the truth, after playing this game for four hours, I, um, I really can't take it anymore. It actually is hurting my ears just to have to listen to me, listen to this, and watch me play this game again because after four hours of hearing that music, and it's just insane. I, it drives me nuts. I hope I never have to play this game again. So as you can see, we're going pretty quickly through these here. We're about ready to get to the uh, the first um, level boss, I guess, which is the uh, cafe. I think uh, this first leg of the, uh, of the first stage, I guess, I did probably the worst. I fell down and got hit by a lot of stuff, which is kind of funny because this is the easiest uh, section of the game, but you know, what are you going to do? And you know, it's funny enough, um, the reason why I decided to do this game, I had actually picked a uh, um, X-Men on Sega Genesis to do first, and uh, actually that game I can pretty much breeze through pretty easy, with the exception of the boss. Uh, I actually tried playing that the other weekend, and I wasn't very successful in getting very far, so I was trying to think of another game that I could do that wouldn't be as taxing. And um, I actually got this idea from watching an episode of uh, Michael B. the Game Genie. Because he did a review of this in the uh, second and third game. Now the uh, the key to this level is um, is to kind of keep your guy in the middle every time you hit something or hit one of the guys. And also too, which is nice about this first stage, is you get a um, basically a power up that will clear out the entire uh, level of guy or the entire screen of guys here. 
uh, and that comes three times. I want to say the first one comes or after you hit 30 people. The uh, second one comes around 50, 60, and the last one comes around uh, 80. And it, basically what it is is a waitress who brings you a milkshake, and I guess the idea is that it's a... I, I have it in the manual. It's some sort of stupid power milkshake or something. Yeah, I almost died right there. Uh, and uh, the key to getting that milkshake is you can't hit her. Like, where she's right there, if you were to throw a... Uh, I, I don't know what the hell you're throwing. Maybe they're milkshakes. I don't know. Uh, and you hit her, she'll actually go away, so you won't get the power up. So the idea being is you just don't want to blind fire these things uh, all over the place because then you, you'll miss your milkshake and you might actually need that. Uh, because there are some times, depending on how cheap the game wants to be, where, like right there, where you're not going to make it up in time and you use that uh, milkshake to clear everyone out. I would say the most difficult part about this stage is the is being able to figure out exactly where you need to throw uh I guess their milkshakes at these guys. So I think there's five or six different uh locations in which they're coming down. And from the view it is here, it really bothers me because it's, it's sometimes it is pretty damn difficult to figure out, you know, just exactly where you need to throw it in order to hit them. But I guess just like anything else uh you play something long enough, you'll figure it out. I actually think I got kind of lucky here on this one to uh, to get to um, to get to the end here without dying. And just as an additional comments too, you can um, you can actually they consider it to be a pass on all the boss stages, with the exception of the last one. After you get to fifty, so. Technically, I already won a little bit a while back, but if you make it all the way up to the top uh, at 99, then you, it's, I guess it's the better ending of the two. But um, I guess if you were doing a speed run, you probably would go ahead and just let yourself get hit after you hit 50 because it'll cost you a couple uh, seconds there. And here we are on the second stage. Uh, pretty similar to the last one. They make it, they change the colors for some reason. That, this color is actually tolerable. The uh, the last level, if I remember correctly, looks like shit. I don't know why they changed the color that bad, but you will see that when it comes up to it. Uh, same thing as the last stage, pretty much. They, they don't change the formats uh, that much. What really makes it difficult is as you keep going through these levels, the, uh, the enemies, projectiles, and these freaking bees, I guess is what the hell they are. Uh, become a become a real nightmare more of them spawn all at once and it's not gonna go away and this is where having those projectile weapons really comes in handy because you don't have them and they're just these little bastards are gonna swarm all around you and kick your ass um, I guess a little tip too that red guy we just passed um, a real easy way to get by him without um, having to get hit by him is to stay cl close as you can to the top of the stage because he stops after you pass him wherever he is on the screen and he can go back and forth but he can't he won't come after you so if you get him at the top of the stage like kind of where I am right now uh, he'll kind of stop dead in his tracks you won't have to worry about him unless he throws something then you gotta worry about that you see I got the skateboard again uh, gonna zoom through these guys it's nice about the skateboard too is why you really need it even though you're going faster and it may make the game more difficult from knowing what's coming ahead of you uh, it does allow you to jump over shit uh, and that is a real big factor to me in playing this game you can cut around corners you can jump over benches uh, I don't think you can jump over projectiles but it but it definitely makes a big difference and also too I guess if you're worried about the points here uh, if you make it to the end of the stage with uh, more than a hundred or more than 99 left on your time counter you get that bonus there so it just takes everything from 99 and down and uh, times it's for the bonus so I don't other than giving you extra lives the score really doesn't mean a damn thing but but I guess if you wanted to race somebody and see who who would win based off your scores that's probably how you would do it we well, got lucky there Damn beast. 
Yeah, sometimes it's really impossible to dodge those bees. And what's kind of annoying too, at least playing it on a D-pad, is that um, in order to distract the enemies, usually the bees, to get them to kind of go move around the stage where you want them to, you've got to kind of position yourself and wiggle back and forth to try to get them to fly one way and then that way they'll you can dodge them. But it, uh, it really wears on your thumb having to rock that damn thing back and forth. This game probably would have been a little easier to do on a joystick, but... Uh, that's only, I guess, if you want to play it. I, I guess I could have played it on a joystick, but I don't like playing on an advantage, and that's the only one I got for that would work for a joystick on this game. Damn hula hoop girls. Another funny, interesting thing about this game is, um, I don't know why, I don't, um, I wouldn't necessarily call myself a collector, but I do, you know, I, I would like to have as many Nintendo games as I can, I don't know if I'll ever get to a full set, so I don't think I'd call myself necessarily a collector, but there, I would like to be able to get a pretty sizable amount of the back catalog of NES games, and also some Super Nintendo, and probably N64, but, um, but I actually, this is the only game I have that's complete in box, not sealed, but in box with the manual, and that's kind of sad. But oh well. Yeah, now this level, God, I hate this. Is probably the hardest boss out of uh, all four of the stages, uh, at least for me, just because these hearts are kind of a pain in the ass, and especially once again with the D pad. Uh, Having to make sure you move correctly with this is really tricky. Uh, I I do it kind of in the sense that I have to push up or down, just very lightly tap them up or down with where it's going. Uh, you can't really move fluently back and forth to try to catch these things like you would, I guess, on a uh, like a 360 or something like that. Uh, and that's what kind of makes it hard. So if you get off rhythm on this part, uh, it's kind of unforgiving, and you'll uh, you'll screw up. Uh, and same thing as the last level. If you once you get 50, you really will pass the um, pass the level. But I got lucky here, and I went to 99. So I'll get the full bonus of getting all of those. But yeah, that's probably the hardest boss stage. Uh, it gave me the most trouble. It's like I said, if you get off at any time, it's just... You're screwed. And here we go. As you can see, we're on the same kind of layout stage. The uh, the colors for the background and the streets have gotten worse. Uh, at least for me, it's hard to see this. It looks like shit, but believe me, the next level looks even worse. Um... Like I said, same enemies as last stage. Nothing's really changed, only you're gonna get more of them, and it's gonna be harder to get through. Kind uh, of as I said in the last levels, you really wanna get a skateboard here because otherwise it's just. The slower you go, the more possibilities these guys have to throw shit at you. Let's see how long I can keep this thing. Also, too, I don't know what if it makes any difference to the score, but as you can see, I just jumped right there. If you can time the jump to when the stage ends and get as high as you can, you can get 900, which is, I guess, just a little bonus score. I don't think it makes a damn difference, but... Oh, uh, here we go on the second part here. I think this might have been the, um the time where I was able to keep it the entire uh, street level stage here. As I said, you can kind of see me messing with these bees, kind of going back and forth, trying to draw them into one direction so that I can dodge them. It gets more tricky once you get three or four of them. And actually, though, having the skateboard makes these bastards a lot easier to uh, to dodge. Let me see, I got the uh, another 99 bonus.
I will tell you what, though, I'm glad. Uh, as a kid, I was a very big Back to the Future fan, and I'm really glad I didn't uh, spend any money on buying this game. I can't really remember if um, if I even rented it as a kid, at least around when it came out. Uh, I think this is one of those games that I got later, probably in my uh, in my 20s, either from a trade or that someone sold to me for real cheap. Uh, I'm pretty sure I didn't buy this in a uh, at like a game store or anything. But um, but yeah, it's it's definitely. I mean, it's hard to it's hard to dog in this game. It's you know, I mean, it's definitely not a good game to be matched with Back to the Future, but it is on the NES, and, you know, is it a crappy game? No, not necessarily. Does the music grate on your on your nerves after a while because you just keep playing the same damn thing? Yeah. It's, there's not really much to it, but still, you know, I don't think it's a bad game. It's not like you can't beat it. It is possible. It's just, it's, it's definitely challenging, and that's what I like about um, NES games more so than I do like new generation like 360 or even Xbox or like PlayStation 2 or PlayStation 3 games um, is because a game like this even though I really cursed playing the game and it took me multiple hours to get this uh, to get this game down um, it's still very very challenging and simple as shit controls there's a lot of times where I play 360 games and I go well I don't you know I'm not sharp enough to get you know, the, the puzzle solving or or I don't know the secret on how to beat this. There's this game and a lot of NES games, there are no there's no secret in this game. There's no little thing that you've gotta read about or you've gotta be clever enough to figure out. This is just, you know, increasing difficulty with how fast are your reflexes and how good are you at playing basic games. There's two friggin' buttons. It's not like you can't figure that out. All right, here we go. We are on the uh, third stage here, the the music stage where you're playing um, Johnny Be Good. Uh, funny about this stage is this stage is not. I guess what you're actually doing here isn't really that difficult. But what I, uh, it's all kind of relative to me. But I would imagine if you're not a musician and you didn't know what the hell these things are coming at you, um, you this might be difficult. But um, these are actually music notes, uh, letting you kind of know, I mean, the three different kinds that they have, denoting the, um, the key of a note. Of a, so, to me, I, I look at it and I can kind of read it. And as you can see, I did it perfectly, I didn't miss one. But I can imagine if you didn't know what the hell these were right off the bat, as a kid, uh, you might be screwed. Because they're not really self-explanatory, they don't... You've got to be able to look at it and know, oh, that's a, you know... That's a, you know, that means it goes up a step. That means it goes down. That means it's in the middle. So, and it's funny, I was reading the instruction book too after I played this game to see if it actually, in the instruction book, actually tells you what that means so that you know where to go up, down, or stay in the middle. And it doesn't say a damn thing. Uh, and I, I, don't, I don't know how readily, how, I mean, how many people know what that would mean if you've never played an instrument, but I don't think it's something widely known. So... Yeah, that, that would suck. Especially if you made it this far, because uh, you might be scratching your head about it. But to me, it's pretty easy. But yeah, that definitely should have been like the second stage. Something that easy, because really, Lorraine stage, when you're in the school, is a lot, a hell of a lot harder. Now this right here, this last leg, when you get to the, uh, the clock tower, this is the worst. You've got to have the skateboard to get through this, because... This is where shit gets really hard. If you don't have a skateboard in this level, um, the game basically gives you just enough time on foot, if you never had the skateboard at all, to, to die once or fall once. After that, you're screwed. I mean, this game just goes so freaking fast. And the enemies are cranked up to a whole new shit level here, and they're just flying all over. I know it looks like I'm doing um, pretty easy here, but trust me, that. I, I got to this part a couple times, and I just got totally, totally fucked up. <laughs> um, luckily, I was able to get the skateboard most of the time, and I was kind of dialed in, so it it doesn't look like it, it's that hard, but trust me, it really is. Anyone who's ever got to this level knows it's, it's nothing real easy. 
And there's a fucking cheap thing right there. I clearly passed the damn level and the bee just... Fucker. Um... But, uh, but yeah, you definitely gotta get the skateboard here. See, I don't remember how quickly I get the skateboard in this. And also, too, if I haven't mentioned, you do have to get the, uh, bowling ball before they'll give you the skateboard. Which makes it a little more challenging, because that way you can't die, and it's not like the, the bowling balls or the, uh, the skateboards just generate at random. So you can get one after the other. You've, it's kind of like a power-up scenario. You've got to get one to get the other. So, um... Makes it definitely... Adds in a little mark of challenge there. And there's the skateboard, and... See how long we can keep this one. Well, that was lucky. There we go. Cleared that stage. I think this is the last one. There might be another one after this, but I think this is the last, uh, the last street level you gotta do. Well, I got lucky there too. Damn hula hoop girls. Oh shit. Yeah, I mean, you gotta get ahead of that red guy, otherwise he comes down and strafes back and forth and kicks your ass. See, there you go. He's a, this, this, this last level is real fucking cheap. The only reason why I passed it is because I was able to get the skateboard for half the level, otherwise I would've ran out of time. Fifty-five, that's not too bad for this far in the game. All right, here we go. Here's the end. Uh, basically, you just go down the street, lightning strikes, you're trying to get the DeLorean up to 88 miles an hour. Every time you hit a lightning bolt strike, uh, your car slows down. So if you get hit by too many of them, you're not gonna be able to get the DeLorean up in time, and you'll basically fail the mission. Yeah, and the shitty thing about this level is if you, uh, if you fail this, you're screwed. You, the whole game's gotta go start all over again. So it doesn't matter how many lives or anything you did. And there I go. Got it. And that's, uh, Back to the Future. I know it looks like it's easy, but trust me, I spent a lot of hours doing this, and I'm pretty sure I got lucky a lot of places, so... Uh, but give it a try if you think, uh, it's something you wanna beat. It's definitely a challenging game, and, um... Hopefully you like this episode of, uh, Beat This Game Today. And also leave your likes, dislikes, subscribe, comments. Uh, stay tuned to this channel too because there's going to be a lot of more episodes like this. Arthur's got another show starting. And also there'll be the Arthur X Jason show that'll be starting soon.